Intel Cryo Cooling Technology is touted as an intelligent subambient cooling product that provides a new and improved overclocking experience on desktops. It takes advantage of the Intel Thermal Velocity Boost feature, which aims to improve system performance by increasing the CPU frequency based on the CPU temperature. The Thermal Velocity Boost is different from the regular Turbo Boost, as Turbo Boost looks primarily at the available power budget. The cryocooling technology is built around the thermoelectric effect. The thermoelectric effect is the conversion of differences in temperature to an electric voltage and vice versa. In the PC enthusiast space, it is best known as Peltier cooling. The Peltier effect creates a temperature difference by transferring heat between two electrical junctions. A voltage is applied across joint conductors to create an electric current. When the current flows through the junctions of the two conductors, heat is removed at one junction and cooling occurs. Simply put, more voltage makes one side go very hot and the other side go very cold. The main advantage of Peltier cooling for PC enthusiasts is that it allows you to get sub-ambient temperatures. And as we all know, lower temperatures means higher overclocks. Peltier cooling has been around for a very long time in the enthusiast space. In fact, we have references all the way down to 1997, going over the Swiftec coolers, Thermaltake had one, Active Cool had one, Coolid had two of them. Even recently, we saw the Cooler Master V10 in 2009 and the V3 Voltaire in 2014. Perhaps the most recent example of it is the Phononic Hex 2.0 Tech Cooler. I don't want to go too deep in the what's and the whys of Peltier cooling, but suffice to say that while the technology has been around for over two decades in the enthusiast space, it still hasn't really found any footing in the mainstream market. That's because while there's a clear advantage of superior cooling technology, there's also some key disadvantages associated with Peltier cooling. First, condensation. A Peltier cooling can produce a temperature difference of up to 70 degrees centigrade between the hot and the cold side. So the cold side will be operating at a lower temperature than ambient. This will create condensation, which you all know doesn't mix very well with electronics. Second, efficiency. Peltier cooling consumes disproportionately high amounts of electrical energy for the heat it dissipates. Third, cooling. In order to maximize the benefit of the Peltier, you need to cool the hot side sufficiently. High performance Peltier units, like the one included in the EK Quantum X Delta Tech, are rated up to 200 watts, which is significantly higher than a modern mainstream high performance CPU like the 10900K, which is rated up to 125 watts. Lastly, control. Most Peltier coolings out there provide the user with absolutely no control over the cooling, so it's either on or off, but nothing in between. So, what makes Intel cryo cooling technology different then? If this technology has been tried, tested, and found not viable for the past two decades, what makes Intel cryocooling technology so interesting? Well, there's a couple of things actually. First, the Intel cryocooling technology offers a software solution to control the Peltier temperature. In cryo mode, the tech cooling is only switched on when required and is switched off when not required. This greatly reduces the overall power consumed as the tech is not running at full power all the time. Second, the Intel controller also measures the humidity in the room. Based on this input, the controller can adjust the tech temperature to always be above the dew point. This helps to avoid any condensation issues. Thirdly, it maximizes the impact of the Intel Thermal Velocity Boost feature by ensuring best case operating temperatures. Using Thermal Velocity Boost also allows us to opportunistically benefit from the added frequency range as the frequency adjusts based on when we really need it. All things considered, the Intel cryocooling technology is arguably the most well-rounded and advanced implementation of thermoelectric cooling in the enthusiast space to date. At the moment of recording, cryocooling is supported by all the 10th generation K and KF CPUs on the desktop. We'll use the Delta Tech in two modes, cryo mode and unregulated mode. In cryo mode, the Intel software ensures that the tech never drops below the dew point. This avoids any form of condensation to occur. In unregulated mode, the tech always runs at full power and thus the temperature will drop well below ambient. Without proper insulation, you may face water droplets on your hardware, so please be careful. 
make sure to follow the Delta Tech installation guide and take all of the necessary precautions to avoid condensation.